We're here with Tommy Flanagan, uh, owner of Strength to Strength out here in Denver metro area. Played some high school collegiate chase professional football. That was kind of your thing. Um, certified CSCS, does the whole thing, has a beautiful facility, um, works kids out anywhere, ranging baseball, football, basketball, kind of all the works, male, female, does it all. Um, yes. Lots of unreal results, so I've heard, and spread around the area, absolutely. That's a big time thing. So, yeah. um, Q&A type stuff, first question, what is the most overlooked and overrated aspect of training? 70% uh, of athletes will not reach their full potential because they do not train their brain or their behavior, their mind, nor their soul. Everybody chases the physicality portion, but when you're able to connect your brain, your behavior, and your biomechanics and look at an athlete's processing ability, you will then see that the athlete is trained in a whole fashion, not just physicality. I think a lot of people in this profession train a majority of just physicality, and I think the most overlooked in regards as a whole is the athlete as a whole. In regards to specific aspects of training is probably um, true agility. True agility is a decision-making process, and it's looking at how athletes make decisions in their sport. And I think that's why I have such a niche as teaching kids more guided uh, plays and playing, following a couple different theories in training. So like, I guess to, to paraphrase, problem solving, putting an athlete in a position to problem solve using their athletic ability is, um, is overlooked. Like, would you consider that agility in a sense? That is agility. Okay. That exactly is agility, mm -hmm. is problem solving. You never separate perception and action and mm -hmm. action from perception. What that means is the information and action. You want sports to look, feel, and behave like they would in a training set. Mm -hmm. So grabbing a kid and seeing where his tendencies are and then setting up scenarios or situations that guide him into um, – it's called a constraints-led approach, constraining him to have more opportunity to solve the problems that he may um, gotcha. just attend, attend to mm -hmm. and add more opportunity for him to get something more in his movement, opportunity, tool bag, toolbox, whatever we call mm -hmm. Very, very cool. Um, second question, what does it mean to be too flexible? You and I have broken that down a little bit. I mean, yeah. I know there's, there's conversations that guys can that they coaches will apply like you gotta stretch, you gotta stretch, you gotta be flexible. But there is a point where athletes are obviously over flexible, and that also can lead to yeah. danger. Um, yeah, there can be um, uh, muscles not only lengthen but they shorten. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't train muscles in shortened positions, so they have a tissue tolerance for only the lengthening of the position. Uh, your muscles are like rubber bands; if they're overstretched over time, they lose elasticity. That's why a lot of gymnasts and um, cheerleaders and swimmers have hypermobility and they start receiving issues that they shouldn't have because they can't control or shorten the muscles in which are already so lengthened. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at active range of motion and passive range of motion. Active being the ability to control and bring their arm overhead or passive after they relax, can you pull it farther? And we look and see which one do they need most, active or passive. So it's an individual basis of saying, too flexible, which is hypermobility, which some people just are born genetically with <laughs> mm -hmm. hypermobility. And as mm -hmm. a training professional, you would need to shorten their muscles a lot more. They don't need to stretch anymore. Now, if the stretching needs to alleviate some pain towards things, that's a great way to help alleviate pain or some muscle soreness um, or gain some passive range of motion to get more active range of motion. Okay, and I got you. Um, okay. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you, I'm with you. Uh, I know there's a myth, this is a hot take from, from Tommy Flanagan. I know I've heard a lot of uh, professional athletes and coaches say that, that stretching can be detrimental to your body when you're actually sore because it creates micro trauma, that's the fancy word. And I've actually heard you say, um, that you, you're not even a big fan of rolling out yeah. Muscles. I do. I want you to break that down for me a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, the neurological fashion of rolling down muscles can confuse um, contractions when they need to be flexing. Mm -hmm. You can actually do more damage than good when rolling out, especially in the healing process of if someone does need soft tissue work, I would see a soft tissue professional, not a foam roller. Um, a foam roller can actually damage muscles 
um, that are breaking down or healing or doing certain things. Um, if someone does need to foam roll in terms of the people who need more passive stretching, mm -hmm. it might be a good thing to receive some soft tissue work that allows you to relax that muscle. But in terms of muscle soreness, I would go through more dynamic um, movement qualities that can relieve some of that by getting blood flow into those muscles, which blood carries oxygen, which can cre create more mm -hmm. nutrients and um, all that stuff to heal. Now, um, I'm not over it to the point, I think there's a tool for it, but I don't, I think it's overused mm -hmm. to actually cause more damage than it is good in terms of a neurological standpoint of flexing muscles. Nice. Good. Um, we're supposed to move on, but I guess you, you, you pop my brain out a little more. So, so as a guy, I've got I've gone through professional combine settings um, yeah. and, and overseas stuff. And I know for vertical tests, I've had a lot of even trainers say, all right, you want to roll out your IT bands and stretch your hip flexors. Those are like the two yeah. <laughs> big things pre-vertical tests. I want to hear your, I want to hear your thought on that now. Um, uh, there's a study done there. You're not going to tear a muscle if you stretch it before you run. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's false. But it also teaches your muscle to relax instead of flex. Mm -hmm. You can even get into a hormonal standpoint of what passive stretching does in a hormone and it calms you down. We don't want to be calmed down before we test. We want to yeah, eject want that to eject yes. us, yeah. Um, but in regards to um, rolling your IT band, your IT band can hold up, I think it's two trains. Oh my goodness. That's how tight it is that um, in regards to the tension it has, it should mm -hmm. not be rolled out. Um, it's, it's connective <laughs> tissue. So it's connective tissue, it's not muscle. So you're, mm -hmm. there, you're actually doing more damage than good, but it's not gonna do anything. Um, mm -hmm. There's two muscles that form your IT band, and that's your tensor, fascia soli, and your glute med. If one hurts, if the bottom of your knee hurts or the front of your hip hurts, that's probably because it's overactive and you need to get more of a glute med mm -hmm. in order to um, abduct your foot when it's in an open chain movement. And in a closed fashion for like a vertical jump, it's hip stability, so it has two functions in regards to what the glute meat does. The TFL is external rotation and mm -hmm. flexion, all that jazz. So in terms of stretching it, I'd actually want you to shorten it. So I would actually not want you to overstretch your hip flexors mm -hmm. or rub your IT band at all mm -hmm. because it's not something that's going to lengthen. The only way to lengthen a muscle is if I cut you open, <laughs> take away your origin yeah. and move yeah. the insertion and actually yeah. lengthen the muscle. Now it teaches it to relax, but mm -hmm. I don't think that there's a way to lengthen a muscle I think, or tighten a muscle. I think it's just either overused or overlaxed. Yeah, and you actually, you, you said something that, that's important that I've I've been learning. It's actually not necessarily muscles that move bones, it's actually the connective tissue that's necessarily moving the bone. Like the muscle's gonna flex and tense and then the connective tissue is what has to react and it pulls it, pull yes, the flexion. Right. Yeah. So people always think like, my yeah. muscles are so weird. Or an IT band said they're gonna relax the muscle. Really, your connective tissue is what's reacting to everything in its place regardless, so. Yeah, it's keeping it in place. That's yeah. a tendon and a ligament. A tendon connects the muscles into the bones, the ligaments hold the bones. Mm -hmm. So there's no, you know, muscles in joints, mm -hmm. there's only muscles going around joints. So if there's something wrong in your joint, then there's a bigger issue with your muscle development. Yeah. Um, and I'll get to explaining that probably if we get talking about jumping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, uh, another question I've had a lot, a lot of kids, I was, I was one of them as a high school guy that's trying to put on mass, especially in the off season, you get your growth spurt, you go from 6'1 to 6'4 and the following year, 6'4 to 6'6. Six, six. Yes. Um, and they lean way up and they stretch out and then everything's tight and they want to put on mass, but they also have realized that their length and their mobility at that size is an advantage, but they feel like if they put on X amount of weight, they lose that advantage. And I just want to talk about how would you train an athlete who needs to put on to be successful that 15 to 25 pound range, but at the same time still maintain. Okay. Um, well, if gaining the weight is going to make them a better basketball player, they should gain the weight. Mm -hmm. If it's not adding to their skill of basketball, there's no need to gain weight. In terms of someone lengthening, <clears throat> when muscles get stretched, um, if they're in a good training regime, normally it will be able to um, add more what's called control and coordination for that person so they don't feel all lengthy, but it does change the way that they're going to move, the way they're gonna make decisions, the way that they're gonna run on court. So their game's gonna play different. Um, but in terms of getting long and strong, um, at the same time, if they're in a good training regime, um, they'll be able to deal and cope with 
growing so fast, like some of my athletes, but sometimes it gets overstretched so much, but they're not also being strong in their stretch. Like I said about shortening muscles, a lot of guys need to learn how to, to, to lengthen, but also shorten. Mm -hmm. I mean, get into a conversation about um, a lot of that stuff. Um, and I think that's kind of what it is. So, so in regards to it, some people do need to gain weight. Some people do need to get stronger, but if you're in a good training routine, you'll get both. Mm -hmm. um, my, mine is more so if you're strong and fast, you're big. So then, you know, is that 10 extra pounds going to make someone a better basketball player? Mm -hmm. It might, mm -hmm. if, if they're getting tossed around and they're mm -hmm. playing the four mm -hmm. and they're, or the five, and it's like, dude, the guy in yeah. front of you, you're just literally being, you're just weak. Well, yeah. then I would first attack your strength, and then I would see if the size is going to help yeah. or, hey, can we make him mm -hmm. a better problem solver by using yeah. less size? Yeah. So it is good. At the same time, I wouldn't put all my eggs in that basket, but I would also say, um, depending on your age, mm -hmm. your training age, your maturity of training, all that stuff will add a count to whether or not your body can handle the mm -hmm. weight gain. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, I mean, especially if they're, they're playing the four, the five, and they're getting bullied yeah. under the rim. It's one of those things where work on your strength and let size be a result of your strength increasing yeah. rather than just focus on size in general. Yeah, for sure. Which I mean, is a big deal. That's looking at Kevin mm -hmm. Durant and LeBron yeah. James. Yeah. Um, those two are completely separate in regards to basketball skill, but mm -hmm. also um, physical attributes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, yeah. like, but they're both fairly dominant in their mm -hmm. sport. So mm -hmm. Kevin Durant probably doesn't believe that him putting on 25 extra pounds would do it. No LeBron shot. James probably said the 25 extra pounds maybe get to the rim like crazy. Yeah, I'm afraid to Nobody's gonna, yeah, yeah. nobody's gonna yep. come up. And Kevin Durant's like, hey, I still know how to get to the rim. Just a different, yeah. different fashion. Rise up, you know, you. Yeah. Faux show. Um, yeah, we're gonna get into vertical exercise. You can't not. There's a couple of little white guys that can both jump in yeah, a yeah, little yeah. bit. We gotta, we gotta touch on it. Come so, on, right? um, top three, in okay. your opinion, as a, as a strength and conditioning guy that that maximizes one's genetic wow. potential to, to jump as high as they can, and then yes. the three most overrated things that people are like, all oh, the jump souls or something. I needed back oh, in the day. Man, like, those things that are just like, yo, yeah, yeah. jump souls. Um, well, the cows only take about twenty percent of the actual jump. Mm -hmm. Most of the development of a of a jump is through 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 the knee up. It's a it's a great thing. The knee up is is things, but then you still have to take into account the dissipation. Um, my top three vert would probably be uh, weighted weighted jumps um, mm -hmm. for speed. Um, I think that's a great way to um, add the ability to to push the force velocity curve mm -hmm. forward. Um, I think adding to my second would be accelerated jumps, teaching the nervous system to override that. It's like an uh, uh, over-speeded sprint. Mm -hmm. um, I think over-speeded jumps, accelerated jumps are a phenomenal way. Um, and then number three is the technical side of learning how to jump. The mechanics. It's Huge. actually probably where I would go next because mm -hmm. it's pointless if I make you jump through the roof and you can't do it with a ball in your hand. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or know what to do on yeah. an approach. Yeah. So I think there is a right technique in regards to jumping mm -hmm. on learning how to accelerate through your penultimate step mm -hmm. and get through the roof. Um, in multiple different situations in regards to single leg, two yeah. legs, yeah. right leg, left yeah. leg, being able to jump off all and from all different positions. I mean, you turn the, turn the sports on and you yeah. know, most of the time, someone's in the way when you're jumping. Um, not all the time, but there is a mm -hmm. correct way to mm -hmm. jump. Mm -hmm. um, I think top three worst word jump <laughs> exercises, holy smokes. Um, I don't know if I can think of anything specific. I think the jump soles are funny to watch. Just <laughs> yeah. It's a, a marketing scheme. Yeah. Um, I, I bought them. Shoot. I had them. Of I, course. Are you kidding me? Wasn't there Air Alert? Did you ever do Air Alert? I that program? Those. Oh man, I tried it out. But it was just like endless lunge jumps and oh, like chair man. jumps. Yeah. 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 Um, I think the three worst bird jump exercise, gosh, jump soles would be the worst thing made. For <laughs> jump. It was a good idea, but yeah. the calf is so. It, it's the. Man, it's not the money making. Matter of fact, yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a, a sister, and it. it's yeah. not one of those things. Um, if it, I couldn't think of probably specific exercises, um, I think there's probably some some 
ways that people program mm -hmm. their exercises because jumping is jumping at the end of the day i mean a lot of it is is not training to jump it's just going and jumping jumping yeah. jumping you're gonna yeah. get it you'll yeah. get up there yeah um but training for jumping is different but um i haven't really seen i think okay i got one uh the jump uh box jumps yeah points um and you're then, not a box jump, not a box jump okay guy. number one it scares people to jump Yes. Like that. There's not something. Now, I think there's a benefit in like doing a single leg jump and getting your leg up there. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are just really showing hip mo mobility. Yeah, and their feet up to their chest and get up yeah, on a box. Right, yeah. get up on the box, but they can't dunk a basketball. Yeah. But they can jump over five feet. Yeah. Wow, a lot of people can without dunking. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think that one's pointless. I would actually have you jump off the box and then up or a plyometric fashion mm -hmm. in a depth jump mm -hmm. to add to probably one of the greatest yeah. for that. But the box jump up is probably pointless in regards to adding so much. It does train the concentric action, which is best if you're fatigued mm -hmm. and if it's in a training regime to add a box jump when, um, you know, a certain way if you're fatigued, you got jumper's knee and landing hurts. Yeah. It's, a, it's a way to add less stress on landing on mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. I would do a straight leg box jump if I was jumping on a box because it's yeah. like seeing how high you That's can actually get, how high get, up, get up yeah, the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I think that one's kind of hard to watch. Um, I don't, I shouldn't say it's pointless, but I think it's, um, I it's would abuse it less. It's, abuse. it's yeah, yeah. overrated in regards to how high people are getting and how high someone's actually jumping. I got you. Um, so for, for people that are unaware, when you talk about a weighted jump, are you talking Great. like dumbbells in hands, Sweet. barbell in the back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, dependent on the athlete, I like barbell. Mm -hmm. um, if a midsection can't handle the load at that high of a rate mm -hmm. and force, then obviously a hex bar is a great way to go. Yeah, like trap bar or something, yeah. trap bar. Yeah. Yes, love them. Yeah. Because it doesn't load the spine if, if it hurts, it's you're mm -hmm. already coming into compression. Mm -hmm. um, and it trains compression. Um, kettlebells in between the legs at full depth, like putting two boxes and jumping in, in full depth and going up. Um, dumbbells are good, but when I've used dumbbells on sides, it's, it's really, um, people catch it fairly tall because mm -hmm. it's hard. You your can't strength, use strength too strength. much, yeah, or your knees are like really getting trashed. Yeah. Um, you're just jumping through your knees because the dumbbells are pushing your knees in yeah. and yeah. your knees are clacking. Yeah. Um, if I do use dumbbells, they're fairly about 10% of the athlete's body weight. Oh, okay. It's not too much, but it's enough to get yeah. um, an over um, exhausted yeah. jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cool, and then lastly again, I, I understand that the concept of an accelerated jump, like whether you're banded yeah. or jumping with a plate and you're swinging out and broadening, whatever you want to do, I guess mm -hmm. just to kind of break that down so people are curious, like, what about you? How would I start with an accelerated jump? Like, what could you yeah. explain so, that? A uh, way that I could do a different accelerated jump is the bench that I'm sitting on. Mm -hmm. um, there's no stretch. So mm -hmm. with an accelerated jump, the band, first off, takes away the weight in which you weigh, and it it teaches your nervous system to contract that fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's less taxing, but it's it's awesome to, to receive a benefit. Sometimes a seated jump is a good way to add an accelerated jump where it's just accelerating. Yeah. There's no coming down and there's no going up. Yeah. There's just going up. Um, with the accelerated, there's a way to put a band over a squat rack and hold it, usually about chin high, and mm -hmm. you can jump as high as you can. Mm -hmm. um, you can add different variations through, through ankle bounces for if someone has um, a lack of ankle stiffness, if we call it, in their um, Achilles, gastroc, stuff like that. Yep. But um, those are the two that I use the most is, is a seated jump for mm -hmm. just a accelerated concentric yeah. action jump yeah. and then I have bands in my ceiling for grabbing and accelerating. Feeling like you're walking on the moon. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Too much can also be too harmful though. Um, if the athlete weighs 100 pounds and grabs a band that has 80 pounds resistance, yeah. Yeah. you're not receiving any benefit. You still yeah. have to, accelerated jumps still have to have some effort behind them or else mm -hmm. it's the law of diminishing returns where it's too much and it's not doing anything. Cool. I got you. Okay, well, last one. Um, in a society that's very microwavable, everybody intends yeah. to, to do things quickly. I want to see what's going on as fast as I can. Um, we'd, we'd rather microwave than bake, I guess is the term yeah. I would put it. Uh, 
when guys come in or an athlete comes in, hey, I got eight weeks until my season starts, or yeah. um, and they expect to see dramatic results in that amount of time. I guess what would you say? Obviously, there's 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 newbie gains um, that that kind of if you're brand new, you're going to see it a flux of results, yeah. and then you kind of slowly peter off. Versus again, it's an elite that that's that that idea of. of Chopping wood, carrying water, chop water, carry whatever it is. I don't, <laughs> you know, it's everybody, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, but you, you gotta go brick by brick. So I guess for for an athlete that's new versus elite, what would you say is is a is it approximate time for someone to come be like, yeah, I'm gonna expect to see my vertical jump go this much. I'm gonna see my strength go this much. Um, yeah. Um, I look at this two ways. Number one, I think people can receive a result very fast if they overtrain. Mm -hmm. I overtrain my athletes to receive a result very fast. So I'll, if I get um, an NFL guy who needs four weeks till he shows up to training camp, I'm going to overtrain him for three weeks very hard, mm -hmm. let him adapt to that training. It's called general adaptation syndrome. Yeah. Um, so there's a way to get that, but those athletes are usually of higher standard and more elite than someone okay. who's subpar in regards to probably genetics, training mm -hmm. age, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So mm -hmm. when we look at a high school level, if you grab a guy who's a little bit less subpar in regards to just overall physical fitness, functional fitness, whatever we want to call it, he probably has a lack of discipline or naiveness to what it takes to make, um, make it to where mm -hmm. he's trying to go in regards mm -hmm. to receiving a result. Um, I would probably say to them, um, there's a responsibility that you have to take. I use the, the terminology for my athletes. I can cook all the food, but you have to eat it. If you don't eat it or you choose to eat it late, you're only getting half the result of which you've got, which means half the meal. Yeah. Well, homie next to you has eaten that and asked for dessert. Yeah. And you're seeing the result yeah. because he's put in the work. It's hard to feed athletes that yeah. are hungry, man. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of people expect that with their, their verticals and their speed. Yeah. Is they think speed comes because they learned how to run. I think <laughs> there's an efficiency of mm -hmm. movement when they learn how to sprint and jump. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you have science professionals out here, sports performance professionals who are adding um, a way to like turn people into machines just based off of the way that they correlate yeah. and program for yeah. specific people. Very cool. Well, appreciate you chopping it up to answer some questions or doing what you do, but Absolutely. we'll be back at it. Cool. Right. Thank you.